Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me out today for one of the very first times in my brand new Ford GT. Believe me, this thing is special. Now because it's not yet been to Topaz for its full body paint protection film, I'm being very careful. I've only driven it in the dry and only very slowly with a big distance to cars in front. But what I wanted to do today was bring you guys along for a complete induction tour to run you through all of the ins and outs the full details of this car, my specification, and some of the surprising things that I've actually learned already about it that I didn't know before. As my fellow YouTuber Doug DeMuro would say, we will go over some of the quirks and features, but this is really the introduction that I got to the car from Gavin, my Ford GT delivery specialist, and to show you the things that I've picked up on so far. So let's get started, all of the details of the Ford GT. Up to this moment, I have driven my new car a grand total of just 50 miles. And I think my top speed was on the Goodwood Motor Circuit of around 35 to 40 miles per hour. So it is still very much early days for this car, but I do not want to take any chances until it's been to Topaz and has the full PPF treatment. So at this point, I took it out for a photo shoot late at night to familiarize myself a little bit with the car, because let's be real, you only start to learn it when you press buttons, drive it, and get a feel for what it's all about. And I have brought it now to a central London supermarket where we're actually right beneath the Heathrow flight path next to a train track so please do excuse normal background noises but after all it is a car let's use it for everyday purposes although when you see the size of the boot I'm not necessarily sure I'm going to get many groceries into it when I need to leave here but we will do our best while we do still have some sun out it's just setting it's a crisp winter's day let's come and have a look at the car and the paint colors the liquid red with the Allen Mann gold stripes of course you've no doubt seen my videos talking about the spec of this car, making it completely unique with the extended palette stripe that pays tribute back to the Allen Mann racing cars of the 60s, and then the liquid red paint colour that comes from Ford, a multi-layer, deep, rich, pearlescent colour which just looks magnificent, and I can't wait for some higher sun to be on it in the summer, and then finished off with the graphite regular wheels. I didn't upgrade to the carbon wheels that you can have as an option, and then also finished around with the satin carbon fibre trim parts for the diffuser, the side skirts and the like. So the Ford GT itself, just to give you a quick introduction to the car it is of course Ford's return to racing introduced in 2015 and then to go racing at Le Mans in 2016 to go back to the 24 hours on the 50th anniversary of their first racing success back in 1966. It's the third generation of their GT models. They had the GT40s that actually won four races on the trot, 66, 67, 68 and 69. Then they introduced in 2004 the first Ford GT, sitting a little bit tall, taller but significantly modernised with a supercharged V8, a manual gearbox and then around 10 years later we have the new generation the second generation of the gt which effectively is a race car for the road it is all carbon fiber it is very lightweight it has a twin turbocharged v6 making 647 brake horsepower which is 656 ps it also has 745 newton meters of torque and it will go on to a top speed of 216 miles per hour now the car is built in markham outside of toronto in canada and i actually went over to see this car in it early stages being built which was a fantastic experience because while it's such a special thing it was very hard to get the car through the application process to get an allocation which I was very lucky to do only a handful or two of these in the United Kingdom in total you just look at the car though look at the immediate bits of aero that you can see about it for example the large openings at the front you have active aero in the front splitter if we come through here the biggest thing has to be these flying buttresses which actually take the air from the radiators through to the engine in a reverse motion but if I come right round to the back underneath the active rear wing you can look straight through the back of this car how cool is that you've got the teardrop cabin the engine immediate shortest path possible to the exhaust system out the back and basically everything is shrink wrapped around what needs to be there it also has the most magnificent suspension system where effectively it has two systems in one with the engine running you can lock out some actuators that will drop the car down five centimeters around two inches and also the rear wing will shoot up to kind of put it completely into racetrack mode and that is a fast fascinating thing to actually watch. I'll show you that later, but this video is a complete induction. So let's start off showing you the key. It's very similar to the Mustang key. You have the GT logo on the back, and of course you can open it up to get the manual key out as well. On the front side, you also have the usual buttons, unlock, lock, and a double press to open the boot. 
you have a very nice relay click kind of sound when you do lock it. And you can also lock and unlock the car, by the way, using some buttons here on the windows. If I just come around to the other side so you can see this better with the light uh, that's going on at the moment. If I unlock it, you can see it shows us a little unlock icon. If I then lock it, it will show that as a lock. Now it's keyless, so you can actually put that back in your pocket. To unlock it, you can press in here, the door will pop, and then you can just open it up. If you then want to lock the car, you close it back down, press on there and the car is now locked the icon changes and that's all you've got to do it's a very nice thing again a bit of a tribute to racing cars because you'd get numbers or bits of information on that rear quarter window so to open up the boot let's have a look at the engine here you can do this using a button on the inside or as I said you can double press on the button on the key it will unlock the car now this is a little bit awkward because if you have the wing up you kind of have to reach over to get at it and when i say boot what we have in here is not really the best example of a boot let's have a look at this carbon fiber panel lifts up and then in the back here you basically have at the moment your uh, tire repair kit you've got a trickle charger box and a bag for that i've got the locking wheel nuts and the number plate plinth screws and that is more or less it and it also gets really hot in here so when i talk about going grocery shopping that's going to have to go in the passenger side it's not going to be fitting in here i think you'd be kind of stretched to even go on a short weekend breakaway with this car unless you're squeezing stuff around the passenger compartment and there are some areas i'll show you that shortly then coming forwards you can see into the engine here of course we've got lots of carbon fiber the entire car is carbon fiber carbon tub carbon body carbon just about everything carbon cover over the top of the ford eco boost engine lots and lots of talk about this 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 and whether it should have been let's say a supercharged v8 or something that sounds a little bit more angry but I have to say when you drive it it is a very raw and lovely sound to get used to and I really want to get higher up the rev ranges as well so that's all tucked in right behind the driver obviously the car overall is trying to keep weight down it's about 13 60 kilos or so in total and you've got the rather nice cap at the back uh, for the oil back there too now one thing that's interesting about this is that you only have a hydraulic strut on one side and it doesn't really open up very far so not only do you have to reach over the rear wing to get at that boot but you also have to watch your head because there is not all that much space this as a piece though is incredibly light in fact the whole car is incredibly light just because everything's made from carbon it's strong and it's lightweight and to close this back down because i think we've pretty much shown you everything there apart from the window where you can see into the cabin you have to push it down and then you have to press here in exactly the right spot and click it into place which i think i've failed to do on the first go there we go click down now something just to watch out for and have to be very very delicate with so to start i think more around the back because this is where we are right now now of course the exhaust tailpipes have this crazy styling to them this was one of the things that stood out to me uh, originally when I saw the car launched there is an optional sports exhaust system that comes from a Krapovich and maybe I'll look into installing that in the future it has very different tail finishes they're smaller and almost golden in color so they might look quite nice with the optional stripes that I have on the car then down beneath that we've got the number plate of course back here but it's all very very open the gearbox sitting behind the engine and then this diffuser with so many fins down beneath it you can just tell this is all about crazy aero and right down underneath actually this whole floor because it's built by Multimatic who are effectively a race team is built in a way that for example you can just drop the floor off and change parts very very easily because it's very very similar to the GT LM race car in every possible way the car is very low and very wide you probably spotted that immediately and in fact if I just spin around I'm currently wearing the Shmi 150 uh, GT heritage hoodie that you can get in the Shmi shop which even says the dimensions on it it is 43.7 inches tall which is not a whole lot that's about what about a meter and 10 centimeters or so in total maybe just under and it drops down another five centimeters lower two inches when you do put it into track mode and it is also incredibly wide to go with that and very very long so the profile is insane it's extraordinarily good looking continuing around the side you have the satin carbon finishes that wrap around beneath the tail lights now one of the really cool things about the tail light besides the design that you have around the side of it is that this is actually an extractor for air you can see that it's open in the middle airflow comes out so even those have aero integrated into what they're actually doing now up at the top this air brake it can actually come up to a higher position when you have it up in the raised mode or it will pivot if you're braking heavily uh, to act as a full air brake to obviously give you the maximum stopping power down at the rear of the car coming around then we've got those floating buttresses now this is where 
the design really just stands out to me. There is nothing else like this. You can see the shape of the teardrop cabin, and when I open up the doors, you get even more of that. But you have the maiden radiators here in the sides, and the way they work on the inside, and this is how I saw it when the car was being produced, the piping literally goes through the buttress and back into the engine bay for cooling. So this is functional, aerodynamic, and all comes together. So clearly, a lot of work has gone into that design, but it's also quite a reminiscent design of the older model. So all of that ties in so nicely and then you get this central section with that sharp edge there, the way it swoops back under, but the teardrop cabin just so low to the ground that it's unreal. The door mirrors hang out wide, and this is actually quite an interesting thing. So look at the positioning of the passenger door mirror. Look how far back it is here, wider than my hand, back from the front edge. And if I come around to the driver's side, this driver's door mirror is actually quite significantly further forward. Now the reason for that is of course visibility, and it's quite funny when you're looking at it, but they have to be placed so that the driver can see them around the A-pillars. Now the A-pillars themselves are also interesting because these are painted gloss black. So to paint the car is actually a three color process. The black has to be painted first, then the gold stripes get painted, and then the red gets painted over the top. So the red is actually above the gold rather than beneath it, which is perhaps the opposite of what you might expect. Expect. Now coming down towards the front, I'm just going to say that this is a really, really long section of car. The front nose is ginormous. In the middle you have this panel that opens up to reveal a number of things, your water tank, your charging points for the trickle charger, and I'll show you that in a second. But normally in a supercar you would expect to find a front, a front trunk, a front boot. In this car you just have some massive cooling fans and radiators. There is no storage space up here whatsoever. It comes down towards the front nose. I really like how the Ford badge, the blue oval, sits between the gold stripes over the liquid red in the middle and flanked either side by these fantastic headlights. Very similar in style, of course, to the older cars, but significantly updated. You have the GT logo inside them, but again, the styling, the angles, the lines, the aggression, and the running lights that are around the outside just look really, really cool. In fact, if I grab the key, just unlock it. I think they probably uh, illuminate here. You can see the indicator comes on and then you've got the running lights. That design, especially if you come to the front and look at it like this, is just insane. I absolutely love it. Then coming down beneath, you have these openings. You can see through around the side of the car here. You can just catch some daylight through there, which obviously directs air cleanly around the side of the car. And then down at the very front, carbon, 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 carbon. And you can see lots of openings for air to go straight through. And also underneath, you have active flaps in here, controlling airflow going under the car, acting with the rear wing to balance the downforce to the front as well as to the rear depending how it needs to be at that specific moment in time. Around the sides of the car you can see here some of that film actually. Normally this is completely open but some blue film has been put across it to protect from the stones that the st sticky tyres would be throwing up which might potentially damage here before it's got paint protection film on it. So that's all part of just protecting and keeping it looking well. Speaking of which, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres, very, very sticky rubber. We've also got Brembo brakes, ceramic, carbon ceramic brakes naturally. And then you could, like I said, you could opt to have the carbon wheels. I'm going to look into some new wheels in future potentially for this car, but these are the standard, the five twin spokes, which you could have painted in three different colours. You could have them black, silver, or in this colour, the graphite. So I went with graphite because I think it works the best to match with the carbon fibre. I thought about maybe painting them gold, Gold. Maybe I'll paint the brake calipers gold. All of that can be decided in the future. Another thing on the exterior, we have the fuel cap located here. So if the car is unlocked, the way this opens is actually the opposite way round to the way you expect. Now, of course, if you open the other way, it might ping and hit onto the buttress, but I'm not going to lie. I had to do my first tank of fuel in it just to fill it up and brim it up. And this is not the easiest because you're lifting a fuel nozzle over a radiator, over paintwork to get it in. Now, you don't have a secondary cap. It has Ford's easy fuel system which works really really well because you can just pop it in it electronically releases and there you go you're done but that is a little bit fiddly if you think about this you know you've got to lift it over 30 40 centimeters of car and you definitely don't want petrol to be dribbling out onto the paintwork so that's uh, a peculiarity definitely one of the quirks of this thing now the doors themselves let us pop this unlock the door and open it up. It opens upwards and outwards, a lightweight carbon fiber shell. And here you can see a bit of just how open it is down there, how, how the stones literally are all sitting scattered. It does come with factory PPF on that bit, so that bit's okay. But then on the inside, have a look at this. And please do excuse my luggage in the passenger footwell. I'll show you what's in these as well that came with the car. But this is focused, carbon fiber, Alcantara, not a whole lot else. It's very, very cozy and snug. You're inside the carbon fiber tub. 
I've got the standard, what they call dark energy interior. You can have upgraded interiors that would give you leather, but I really wanted the Alcantara inside for the steering wheel, the seats, uh, the door sills. I might change this to be carbon fiber to match with the dashboard, but you've got these floating, this floating dashboard piece, the uh, pods that you have, uh, for the air conditioning units. The grab handle for the door itself is also floating. It's simple, futuristic. Look at the steering wheel, for example. Look at all the buttons, like a race car, all right there on the steering wheel. I'll run you through all of those. Some people might say, yes, it's got the light controls out of, well, the same as in my Focus, to be completely honest, but that works. They're well-developed. They just work. They just do what they're supposed to. And all the important controls have been made specifically for this. For example, the driving mode to put it into track. You've got a few toggles in the center for comfort and to raise the lift system but the seat is bolted into the tub the seat is literally fixed into the base of the tub you can only move the backrest to lean it forwards and rear and then down here you have the pedal box so you pull this lever and the pedal box will come sliding towards us in a second he says maybe i need to put some pressure on it to actually do that but you can see this panel with the brake and accelerator and the footrest that slides forwards and backwards over the top of the uh, carpet that i've got here on top of the carbon tub but even down there you can just see carbon fiber carbon fiber and more carbon fiber also down here you have this little storage box just on the driver's side this opens up you can actually get a decent uh, thing there sunglasses ipod small little bits and pieces just tucked away inside that uh, pouch out of the way uh, in front of the base uh, of the seat so literally this piece is fixed you can't move this piece at all you've just got a lever here to lean forwards and backwards the rear backrest which you can see behind has the harnesses uh, for the six point racing harnesses which i don't have installed in this car yet but they are going to come in in the future and just the uh, normal black three point. Now Ford didn't let you do too much by way of modification to the interior. You kind of had to take the car in its main specification, which was a bit restrictive, but either way, I still think it looks very, very, very good in here. So let me take a step inside the car then to show you more of the interior. And this is something I'm quickly getting used to doing. It is not the spaciest of interiors. I am not going to lie. So sitting in here, even my head, pretty close to the roof and I'm not a particularly tall person either but it is a very focused very ready to go race car type seating position to start it up then foot on the brake and you have this very big red start stop button in the center the screen wakes up with the GT logo but let me press this button and bring it into life things all come together got some messages of course the door is open We've got the GT Ford Performance logo on the central screen. The screen is shared with lots of other Ford models. It's their sync system. Again, it just works. It does what it's supposed to. But you have this digital display, which shows you through many different driving modes, many different features. If I just close the door down, look at this. Look at the mechanism here. You can see straight through to the very raw parts, but even those are really, really beautiful. Everything about this car is very well made and looks very, very nice inside. You can see the rake of the A-pillar just shooting down towards the front arches. Visibility is unreal. The handling and positioning is basically what this car is about, that race car experience. And you can see more here now, by the way, this kind of floating piece. I kind of see this as where you would shove your dirty washing when you're on a road trip. This is what that space is for. So on the dashboard, at the moment, we've got a few different displays. Um, so you've got the main rev counter. This is in normal mode, which you can see here. The seven speed dual clutch gearbox, you can see its reference here. We've got the fuel uh, and oil temps up at the top. Fuel is an interesting thing, actually. The tank is 57 litres. That is tiny for a car with 650 horsepower, and it goes very, very quickly. Now, if you toggle the different driving modes, for example, if we go up to Sport, it all changes a little bit in its appearance. You can see it swapped around gear and speedometer. If I just turn it back, you'll see how that changes. There you get the speedometer in the center in normal mode. Reason for that, of course, is just to make everything a little bit more focused. Now on the right-hand side, you can actually toggle using this and bring up various different bits of information. So you can bring up your trip, you can bring up your tire pressures, you can have some additional gauges, you can actually change what gauges you have shown as well, and then you can go back to the standard view. So on the left side of this, you have this whole menu where you can change a number of different things uh, and features. So you can enable launch control, you can bring up some information, um, depending which details you'd like to have there. You've got the rear wing deployment. So if you want to have it in poser mode, you would just go down to raise and it will stay up all the time. Uh, but that's not so much my thing. I like it to be going down. Here you've got measurement units, all, all the usual settings you'd expect to find in such a car, all very easily accessed. 
uh, from inside. So I uh, don't want to reset that right now. So one thing just quickly I spotted in there, we had the uh, information about the LED shift lights up here at the top of the steering wheel, which are really, 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 really cool. Um, so just your usual settings uh, and features to be found in there. Now, if you go into track mode, just here, spin it into track. This is where, when I press OK, the whole car would drop down. But I'm not going to do that right the second. I'll save it for a moment. We'll pop it back into sport. Now, on the steering wheel itself, as well as that, like a race car, you've got your lights up here, your washer uh, up there, your wiper toggle is on the opposite side to your mode selector. Then you've got your indicators, a short press on the indicator, and it will blink three times. A press and hold on it, and it will then stay on instead, and you have to press it again to cancel. Beneath that, you've got your cruise control, pretty basic functionality it's not adaptive but again easily accessed and then at the very bottom you've got next and last track or next and last radio station and on the right side you have volume up volume down and the ability to talk to the car if you would like to talk to the system that you have in here talking about this this is exactly like I have in my focus um, on off for the audio home button up at the top but outside of that you can jump in and out of a few uh, ah, the volume button you have to do from the steering wheel of course or press the button here to turn it off but you can see how this all works i've not connected it to my phone yet navigation central london mobile apps not turned on at the moment because i'm not connected to a phone and then you have more settings uh, in here it's responsive it's quick it does the job um, and we've got a reversing camera as well so to choose your driving mode you would toggle this so into reverse for example it'll bring up the reversing camera or if we go back into park that will instantly turn off to go uh, into drive you turn it all the way to the right to be in drive uh, brings up first on the display so it stays automatic with the paddles uh, in that mode unless you press m in the middle which signifies here and then it will stay in paddles only of course it will automatically downshift to prevent any damage to the engine but it won't upshift so you'll be running into the red line uh, if you do that popping it back into park you have to be in park to put the car into uh, its track mode other fun functions we have down here we've got the hazard warning lights we've got the track mode so if you press this once when you're in sport you can see it goes into esc performance uh, if i just press ok to take away the message if you press and hold it it will tell us that esc is going to turn off so you have to hold it for five seconds and then you're on your own which is not a good place to be in in such a car with this amount of power so we'll turn that back on if you're in normal mode normal or actually i didn't show you but the other way from normal you also have wet mode um, so you can go completely into wet the other way. Um, if you're in wet mode, you can then press C, which gives you a little icon down here, comfort suspension, so things get a bit softer. And I can tell you for driving around London, that is a very nice thing to have. The other one is the suspension lifter. Watch this. It goes up instantly, absolutely instantly, and drops straight back down. It's super, super cool. That works very well. And there is also one other driving mode, if you go this way, which is VMAX mode. Now that lowers the car, but it keeps the wing down because wing up just creates drag. Obviously drag will downforce, but downforce creates drag at high speed. So that's what you would do with VMAX. Now I've not used that yet, of course, um, just the main uh, normal modes up to this point. To the right of the infotainment over here, you've got your climate control, which is all fairly basic. There aren't exactly a lot of modes. You can change where the air is pointing, auto, circulation, air conditioning on or off, fan speed and temperature. And it's all pretty analog. Maybe that could have been a little bit posher, but then it's the ethos of the car. It wouldn't really have fit in. And then over to the right side, American car, GT, and my chassis number J being the model year, 211 being the number of my car. One of the very last ones of 2018. So J represents the 2018 build cars, and then K is 2019 now. Um, so that's my specific car. There's no um, glove box beneath this, or, or any storage areas here beyond down at the very bottom. You could maybe squeeze some things beyond this uh, fixed footrest. You can't actually move that. So you could get a small bit of luggage down there at the back. Oh, and in the center, by the way, your two USB ports. I'm not quite sure what this is for. Uh, and then a rubber mat here, which you can actually put your phone in quite nicely. I've been discovering this. It works really, really well. Coincidentally, has a built-in phone holder. Very nice phone case here. Tuck that in there. Done. That works just like that. Or back in your pocket. So what else do we have? Automatic handbrake. Uh, of course, this operates as you would expect. You can hear the noises it makes in the background. We've got some carbon fiber here at the uh, end of the central tunnel. This could be carbon fiber. It's not on my car, but uh, it's good enough because um, you don't really see this, to be honest. Um, in the middle, you have unlock and lock um, on this door, actually, as well. This is the button to release the door. So you press that, it pops open. If for some reason that doesn't work, you have an emergency release for the doors here, which is kind of Velcroed down. 
or magnetise down I should say, and you would just pull this and then the door would pop as well. So that obviously is to be used if the electronics go a bit funny and don't work, you've got your window switch as well here, but not a whole lot really for the passenger side, there's no extra storage box here for the passenger uh, like the driver has. So up top, the mirror is kind of old school, where it's mounted straight off the glass, not attached from the top because it has no electronic functionality, just a uh, dipping mode that you switch. Very old school, but light and small. And then up top, you've got some sensors, you've got the button for the light. This is all pretty simple, it has to be said. And then your sun visor, your tiny little sun visor. But given the driving height, that does actually kind of work. So I guess that's a pretty thorough run through of the interior. There's not all that much actually to show you in here. There's one funny thing. If let's say you fueled out and the car locked, and here by the way, you have the other button to open the rear boot, um, your automatic lights, different light modes. Um, if you wanted to have just your side lights on, obviously it's gonna chime away at me. Um, it's all controlled through there. But to open the car, if you get it locked in gear and you need to get the car in neutral, is quite a funny process. Coming around towards the boot, back here, one other thing I didn't show you, tucked away down here, is this tool. Basically, with this tool, you would stick it in a hole in the bottom of the boot, twist it, and that would put the car in neutral. So you have to keep that in the car. That's quite an important thing to keep with you at all times. Now, if the battery's gone dead and you're trapped out of the car, he says, again, you can see that's a little bit fiddly to close, the way to actually open up the car is to take the key, take out the uh, manual key from the end of it, and then underneath here, is the keyhole the slot, just like that, that then pops the boot. These are the kind of things that you only learn if you do an induction tour in full with the car. So that then has lifted the boot up, put the key back in my pocket, and then from in here, you have an emergency release tucked in here to open the uh, driver's door as well, if you're then completely trapped out. So you can go one stage and then the next stage, all a little bit funny but I suppose it kind of works. I've got it that time. Look at that opening as well. That's a really nice little one that you have down there. Just more airflow, more cooling, more air able to flow out of the car. It is time though to show you the track mode, to drop the suspension and raise the rear wing. So let me take a step back in here then quickly. We'll have to start up the engine for this so that I can do the demonstration. Not that I mind bringing this back into life. Close the door, lots of beeps and chimes and things to let me know what's going on. But with it in P, you literally toggle this. Well, let's go up to sport first. Let's go into track. And this is where things happen really quite instantly when I press this button. How cool is that? It is literally one of the most awesome things ever to watch. Now I'll talk more about why you've got to keep the engine running to keep it in track mode later on, but the car sinks right down to the ground. It is absolutely mega. So let me step back out uh, to show you this from the outside. And we've now got the fans running in anger, as you can hear, but just come round and take a look at this. It chimes just to let me know the engine's running and I've taken the key out of it. Look at this thing. Just look at it, slammed right down to the ground. Tires up in the arches to the max. Look at this, look at this. The gap is like one finger. At the front, I think it's pretty similar. Yeah, you're not gonna get a much extra space in there. And when the wheels are turned in its, in its track mode, it looks even more insane. And obviously the wing has come up. You've got the hydraulic arms for the wing mounted up from the center. And you can hear the burble of the exhaust system as well. But fans running in overdrive to keep the car cool. It's just that profile, that silhouette, as you come around the side. It is a mental looking thing. It's so low, honestly. If I come next to the car and crouch down, even I am probably still crouching at the minute down and above the top height of the car. It is so, so, so low and so cool looking. The carbon arms that come around for the mirrors. This thing, it's my dream car. I cannot believe I'm lucky enough to have this in the garage and to be able to film these videos for you guys. Now, if I come back to the car and just open it up for a moment, I'm gonna turn it off from the passenger side and you can see that it's jumped straight back up again because of the engine uh, no longer being there. To lower the wing, you actually have to drive it in normal or sport mode to about 18 miles an hour or hard acceleration uh, to get that to slam back down. And it makes you jump a little bit when it actually does. You don't really realize that it's gonna happen. And you can see here exactly why we have this film. 
the Multimatic installed on the underside of the sill because of all of that dirt, which has pretty much uh, come from the Goodwood motor circuit. Now, also to show you in here, a few cool things that actually came with the car. And amusingly, you can see where I've shoved a microfiber cloth, about the only place to store something. So this is a letter uh, from Bill Ford. Uh, it's got my address at the top, so excuse me if I just position the angle. But you can see, uh, here we go, from Bill Ford, dear Tim, um, about getting the allocation. Super, super cool, nice little touch. In here, um, which came inside an envelope, you have a few more details and bits and pieces. So here we've got a couple of photos of the car in build, literally photos themselves from various stages and days uh, of the build process. Old school, I need to get the digital copy of those. And then on the other side, you've got uh, the US sticker, slightly less relevant here, but it's uh, an IVA, it's an individual uh, import vehicle. And then on this side, a few details about my specification and this plaque this sticker actually goes on the order kit so on the front of that lovely carbon fiber order kit box that i got with the car or got ahead of the car to choose my specification you get that um, which you can stick on to really personalize it and connect it to the car so this is again very very nice and um, we'll just move all of this out of the way i want to be super careful because these are all things that obviously i'm going to be keeping um, for the whole of time he says let's not drop that out on the floor at all in this one you have a very nice metal box inside the card box which inside it has a book about the build of the gt so lots of the stories the histories the race cars um, so this is again uh, a very nice thing that's actually come with the car i'm going to package this up uh, off camera later on oh no i've managed so we can put all of that back for the moment so these as you can tell not really anywhere those can actually fit other than in the passenger side uh, of the car the cabin it's tiny, it's absolutely tiny, but the view through the rear window is really, really cool. Looking back there, especially with the wing up and the stripes, just a mega, 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 mega thing. So by way of an induction, I think we've pretty much covered a lot of the things that there are to cover about this rear wheel drive supercar monster, the eco beast, quite literally. I'm here now with the sun having set a little bit on me in its liquid red and Alaman gold. Also in here, by the way, because you move the pedal box, which I think I can give a better demonstration of this, if I just pull it firmer, there we go, you can see it sliding towards me. And if I put my foot inside the car, I can just pull that again. You can see how it moves forwards and back to be in the right position. There's quite a good range of movement, although for shorter people, I'm led to believe it doesn't necessarily come far enough back, but the steering wheel has two methods of adjustment. You can see here, um, you've got a lever on this side to do the whole unit forwards and back like a race car and then on the other side you have a second lever there to do your usual small amounts of rake uh, moving the steering wheel forwards and backwards i can't I have pushed it slightly out of position there we go lock that back in so you've got an amazing amount of movement actually with the wheel uh, and the pedal box given that you can't actually move the base of the base of the seat around on the passenger side if i just try and move my bag slightly out of the way tucked in down here you also have some cup holders of course, absolutely compulsory to have two cup holders. Um, quite a small little things that folds down. They do the job. Awkward to find from the driver's side though, but they are there. And down here, you also have the lever to open up the front nose bridge section, which if I just come round, there's a catch under here, you can ping that. Then this has, uh, you will see here, the arm to hold it in place, just in there there we go in here again race car totally stripped out you've got your battery charging terminals your washer fluid your usual bits and pieces and you can see just look at this you can see straight through you can see down to the floor straight through there that's how much this is like a race car the craziest thing and all of that sandwiched around the radiators and the exposed carbon fiber inside there too so to close this back up just ping that pop that back down this is this is like super super light this panel drop it down give it a gentle click and it's locked down into place it is my dream car it's my favorite car it looks phenomenal and honestly i feel very 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 lucky and privileged to have the opportunity to drive it and i'm going to do absolutely my best to share this car with you with the adventures that are to come the, the events i'm going to take it to the road trips the locations it will all be uh, there to tell you all about as the future comes around my word, I apologise for being a bit out of breath. I think that comes from the excitement of the car. Just going around it gets my heart pounding, especially just looking at it here like this. So, what a special, special thing. And I hope you guys have enjoyed learning a few small bits and pieces, seeing the boot, which I now need to go and do some grocery shopping and try and get in there. And seeing just how it works, going into track mode and the like. 
But that is it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being subscribed. And I will catch up with you again next time. Cheers.